goes over the place, you know, etc., etc. <laughs> however, have you have any kind? Would you, however, have any kind of meaningful relationship with this dog? Now, how does this answer your help? Answer help in understanding why God wanted beings to truly love Him back. Because as human beings, we would, ooh, that would be the perfect thing. I could have a husband who would do exactly what I say and he wouldn't hurt me or wouldn't tell me things I don't want to hear. He'll just do what I ask him to. How can this, how did God not want this to happen in order to love him back? I hope that you're not saying that literally. But it really, it really, it really goes. A lot really of wife would like that, no? But that, <laughs> would, but that, would, not be, that would not be genuine you, love. You want the love That's back, the right? Yes, definitely. Exactly. I want a meaningful love, love back. relationship, yep. yes. Yep. <laughs> and that is exactly what God is expecting from us. He cannot force it out of us. Lucifer, he did not force Lucifer to, uh, to love him. Instead, he gave him that choice. Lucifer make his own choice not to love God back. He, he gave us a choice. I think that's why he gave us a choice. Because he could have said, um, there's no sin in the world. We're going to be perfect human beings. But he wanted us to have the choice to love him back freely. Yep. Not, not something that is going to be forced. And if I also um, can add to you know, the, the forced love um, that you mentioned is when God has given us um, our marital relationship mm -hmm. to be an example of his relationship to his church. Yeah. And um, my husband and I, we have made this covenant to love each other until death, mm -hmm. right? And I can't force my husband to, to love, love me. Back. He can't force me to love him. Mm -hmm. The minute he tries to do that or I try to do that, it ceases to be love, yeah. right? And um, love is something that needs, and I always make this <laughs> reference, that love is like a plant. Mm -hmm. A plant needs freedom. Mm -hmm. It needs air. It needs space mm -hmm. to grow, you know? And so husband and wives, and I think I could just put in this little family life tip. <laughs> we have to give each other the opportunity to grow. We can't just hold on to our husband and say, husband, you have to stay mm -hmm. with me all the time. Do what I want. In, do what I want you to do. No, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and I hear my husband in the background. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's why I allowed him to go to Orange Walk. Right, just for right. four days. Okay, good, four good. days, that's enough. That. Yes, <laughs> and so, we have to give each other the freedom yep. to make decisions mm -hmm. because we were made by God as free entities. Exactly. Yep. You know, free individuals. I can't be the mind of my husband and That's my right. husband can't be the mind of me. Mm -hmm. You know, he chooses to think one way, I choose to think another way. Mm -hmm. You understand? And I always... And that, that is a whole t another topic. It is, it, it is. is, it is. But we won't go there, right? It's <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, but very, the whole, very interesting, but it is. Yes. It is. Um, how, when we look at Monday, the fall and the flood, take a mental note of your thoughts throughout the day. What does each... What does this teach you about the state of your own heart, considering Monday and the, the fall and the flood? Sister Michelle? Okay. Um, so the fall and the flood. Here we see that God intended that his people should love him, but because of sin, mm -hmm. you know, they fell into sin, and so they fell from that relationship that God expected of them, mm -hmm. And because of that, as a result of their sin, the flood came, right? And um, we also notice that um, God had to make the point. It was so bad. Sin was so great on the earth that God had to reach to the point where he said that he had to destroy them. Mm -hmm. And as I said, the result was sin. But why did God have to come to that decision mm -hmm. that he, he had to destroy, destroy them? Mm -hmm. It was because their hearts, everything that they thought of was just evil continually. Everything was devoted to their idols. To their idols, mm -hmm. what they wanted. They wanted to just live to please themselves. They and didn't want to abide by any laws. No and it, te it tells us what depths to just to say devoted. Because when you're devoted to something, 
you're putting your everything into that one thing and and that was what the people were was doing they were actually devoting themselves to the idols and that's the reason i think god had to push in had to intervene yes mm -hmm. so so what about people who are living this double standard life mm -hmm. who may still say to you and I that God knows my heart, mm -mm. you know, what about them? Indeed, he knows our hearts. Right? Exactly, that's, just, that, that's the reason why he had to come because in. We, we, because we were, we were talking, you know, a couple of few of us were talking this week about that same thing, that it's, it's really dangerous when, when we see, when we hear Christians say that God knows my heart, mm -hmm. you know, and they're ready to say, who are you to judge when you're not judging them, right? But they're quick to say, and, and it, it is even mentioned within our, you know, our Seventh-day Adventist church, God knows our heart. And, 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 and what, what I mentioned to them, that indeed God knows our heart. You know, our heart is, deceit, is deceitful, it's wicked. You know, and that's why God wants to give us a clean heart. And when, when we receive that heart from God, we will not make the mistakes like the, um, like the, like, like the people back in the, in the days, and, uh, you know, who built the Tower of, of Babel. Our heart, when we receive from God, will be one of, Devote, you know, devotedness to God. We, we, we surrender all to God. And this is what people need to understand. If, you, if you're not willing to devote your, your whole life to God, you know, then just be careful of, of, of having that hope of being heaven bound because you're still in the, in the valley of decision, if, 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 if I may, um, you know, use that statement. In, in other words, if you were to die, you cannot die and say, oh God, you know my heart. I know your heart, and that's why I was trying to give you a clean heart. But yeah. instead, you rejected what I have to offer you. I, I, I cannot force it on you, I, but I can only offer you it, and you rejected it. I think it comes back to Sunday where it says um, God is love, and that's how we, we should love others. But that's not only that, but to know God and to love him will mm -hmm. help us to know what to do. I think that's why, yes, God knows our heart, but I think that's why he left um, laws and principle and all mm. of these things to guide us into what we, we are to do. That's why he left us the Bible. This will show us exactly what to do. So when you're telling yourself, you're literally telling yourself, God knows my heart, it's because you want to do what you want to do. Mm -hmm. you're not, you don't want to do what God wants you to do it's, or it's, what it's God like, expects from you. It's like going back to the Sabbath school, uh, the Sabbath school um, when Elijah John talks about the... <coughs> about what, what took place with the disciple and the, and, and, and the, and the man and his son. Mm -hmm. You know, if we, if, we, if, if we could recall the life of the disciples back then, their mind was set on Jesus building his kingdom here on earth. Their mind was not fixed on what Jesus had planned for them, the ultimate plan. So, mm -hmm. so to some degree, we can agree when we say that they were still not 100% where Christ wanted them to be. You know, and it's the same with us today when we don't accept that genuineness, that, 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 that heart that God wants to give us, we're not 100% where God expected us to be. So we can't give God that love back that he wants, uh, we, we wants from us. You know, God is going 100%, but we're still at 50, 45, 10, whatever it may be. We're not at 100%. Because when we're at 100%, and this is what the lesson talks about when it compares to the people back then, that's why God called Abraham, who we know as Abraham, you know, all these is to show the love that God wants, where he's still fighting to redeem us back to himself. Mm -hmm. And in addition, Elder, you know, when you look at the love that God has given to us, it's one that gives us the freedom to choose, exactly. to obey and to disobey. Mm -hmm. yeah. And with that, with that comes great responsibility. Mm -hmm. You know, because we have to, if we want to remain in God's love, we have to, we have to choose daily to love him exactly. and to obey what he says. When you look at um, the, 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 the people in Noah's days, they, their thoughts was evil continually. And you wonder, how is it that they were like near to Adam and Eve, near to that perfect mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm life, the condition there was much better than ours today. Yeah. We have degenerated and mm -hmm. sin has come down in lonesome on yeah. us today. But why were their thoughts evil continually? You see, when we sin one time, mm -hmm. if we do not take hold of ourselves and we 
commit another sin. Mm -hmm. We are getting weaker and weaker, and we are getting, um, we reach the stage where we are more susceptible exactly. to sinning more and more. So we have to, by the grace of God, as Christians, when we find ourselves sinning or committing one sin, we have, have to, to ask the Lord to give us the strength not to, to commit another. Yeah, because they always have to cover up the first one and cover up the other. Exactly. And so it, it, is, it is right. So we have to be careful as Christians. Don't plan to sin as Paul said. As Christians, born again, children yeah. of God, we don't sin. I think and that, you wonder... I, I think that's why it has to be something daily and something like minute by minute. Mm -hmm. Because if you say, oh, I'm not going to sin today. What about tomorrow? Right. Or what about the next day to come? You have to you have to take it day by day exactly. and, and with God because if you don't have God you're automatically going to jump into it. Definitely. So it's it's like what kind of people do, do God expect? And I think that's where it comes in in Tuesday because it says, How do we as Seventh day Adventists see ourselves in the relationship to the rest of the world? Ella Leon. How do we as Seventh day Adventists see ourselves in, in relationship in to in the relation rest of the world? To the rest of the world, and it, it, may I continue to say that this is, this is, this is what par par parallels exist between us and, and ancient, ancient Israel. If we, if we see, despite all the, like what Sister Michelle was um, explaining, you know the, the despite the wickedness among the people and everything, God still call, you know, someone. He 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 chooses someone. Who will, who will be willing enough to carry out basically his mission, you know, the plan of salvation, plan of redemption. And that was, that was Abraham. And Ab Ab Abraham was willing to uh, step forward and say, Lord, whatever, you know, you want me to uh, go, wherever you want me to go, I'll go. Whatever you want me to do, I'll do. How can we as Seventh-day Adventists, you know, relate ourselves to that? It's simple. If we look at our time today, compared to thousands of years, you know, um, before, it's like no difference. Mm -hmm. We see the wickedness still exists on a high level today. You know, even in our little country, Belize, mm -hmm. whatever, whatever wickedness, whatever crime, you name it, is here in Belize. You know, but God called us Seventh-day Adventists with a, with, 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 with a message to redeem people back to him. We are willing to say, here, my Lord, sent me. It's not like, oh, I'm a Seventh-day Adventist and that should be something I'm proud of. No. I should focus on what God has called me to do. I'm here to preach the gospel, to let people know that the God that I serve, the God that wants you is an everlasting, loving God. His love never changed. And that same God who wants, who loved me, that same God who, who Guiding me through every day and protecting me is the same God who wants to do the same for you. So I believe just like Abraham, we are called to, to carry out that, 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 that message as well. Mr. So Michelle, anything you want to add there? <laughs> yes. Um, in addition to what Elder Leon said, you know, um, when you look at Abraham, Abraham was blessed. Mm -hmm. He was so blessed. And the reason that God blessed him so much was that wanted the blessings of Abraham to show up mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that nations, heathen nations around could see that, listen, there is a, a God, God who Abraham is serving and who this God is blessing. You know, and when I look at that point, I, I, I draw the parallel with us as Seventh-day Adventists mm -hmm. today. Um, in that we, though Abraham was called and a nation came out of of Abraham mm -hmm. today God is calling us as individuals yeah. and he has chosen us as his people mm -hmm. he has blessed us beyond our beyond mm -hmm. and above our, our imagination. imagination you know mm -hmm. with spiritual wealth mm -hmm. physical wealth you name it health messages he has blessed mm -hmm. us but why is it that God has pronounce all these blessings. Mm -hmm. Is it to just keep to ourselves as nope. Elder Leon said? Yep. And one of the reasons, the main reason God has chosen us, and these are the parallel, just like Abraham, mm -hmm. He has chosen us, he has given us, he has blessed us above all other people, and he has given us the response 
responsibility to share the gospel. Yep. What God wants of, of us today <coughs> as Seventh-day Adventists, and if I may use this term, Sister Keisha, mm -hmm. big him up. Uh -huh. God wants <laughs> us him to up. big him up All in right. front of everybody mm -hmm. to let them know that, listen, this is the God I am exactly. serving. This is the God who has blessed me, who has brought me from nothing. But we can't big him up if we don't know him. And that, yes, mm -hmm. we definitely can't big him up yeah. if we don't know him. So we, def we have to have a relation, we have to know him, have mm -hmm. a relationship with him, and then we have to share him. Exactly. And one quick point before I close off on this. <laughs> um, you know, I like the statement that Paul uses. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't remember just now exactly where, but it's Romans chapter 1, I think verse 14, where it says that Paul was saying, I am a debtor mm -hmm. to the Greeks, to the barbarians. And as Christians today, we are debtors. Who are we debtors to? Mm -hmm. We are debtors to the murderers. We are debtors to the drug addictors. Mm -hmm. we, are, we are debtors to everybody around mm -hmm. us. Why? If we don't share the exactly. gospel with them, mm -hmm. They won't, they won't know, know and they won't know how to change. Mm -hmm. yep. So we are debtors to mm -hmm. the people of the world exactly. if we don't share the gospel. Yep. And this is what we study in the, in the quarter where it talks about um, Isaiah, Isaiah. This is what basically, this is one of the, um, the comparison with Seventh-day Adventists and spiritual Israel mm -hmm. that, we are, that we are called to be a witness for God to let those know the God that we serve, as, 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 as what you were saying, no? not to just keep all this blessing to, our, to ourselves, but God is, God is preparing us. Mm -hmm. He has blessed us in so many ways that, our, uh, that, that we can be this powerful witness to him that when people will say, well, you can say that, mm -hmm. but you don't know what I'm going through. And then you mention it to them. You know, everything that God has given us is to, is to, is to fight off to fight off all these excuses that people will will bring up and when people realize that look you have you know my back is against the wall you you, you have me can i can do nothing else but say lord what must i do you know to 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 be safe okay as we as we continue the quarterly um it kind of brings my mind back to the asia the israelites mm -hmm. in egypt why did god call the israelites out of egypt why did he do that? If he knew what they were going to do and know that they weren't going to be obedient to him, why did he call them out of Egypt? Okay, okay. Um, well, <clears throat> what I understand is that God called them out of Egypt um, to give them the message because if you notice, there were covenant relationship well. before. Mm -hmm. You know, you had covenant, <coughs> the Noahic covenant before, but now God was calling the children of Israel out of Egypt because mm -hmm. he wanted to make a covenant with them because he knew that they were in slavery, they were in bondage. Mm -hmm. They became so familiarized with the gods of Egypt mm -hmm. and with all their heathen worship. And so God wanted to take these people out, out, of, Egypt. out of Egypt to have them out of that bondage. Out of that bondage to also educate, re-educate them because exactly. a lot of their, their, their forefathers who were in Egypt, mm. who knew mm. God, had a relationship with him, had died. And so it was like a new, new generation, generation who mm. didn't know God, didn't respect God because of so, how they... So it wasn't because the message was repetitively and continually saying the same thing. It was because God wanted these new people to know who he is and what he wants for them to have that relationship with exactly. them. Um, I would say basically what what we have mentioned earlier, you know, God have a set of people whereby He wants to, you know, carry the, the plan the of message. plan of redemption, plan of salvation through, you know, and that's why He that's why He did all these things through the Israelites to bring them out of Egypt, all these miracle, and still, you know, despite seeing all of these, the whole generation. Till they did not accept God in, in, in that manner that He have them, you know, marching in the wilderness and pass away so that the new generation can actually, you know, have a whole different mindset, I would say, of who God is, you know, and what God expected from them. But we know the history of the Israelites that it's even this new generation as they go along, that God said, you know what? That's it. You know, I I I I'll 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 stop right here. 
so that the plant can just move on to everyone. But you know, if we really study the quartal, we will see that when it talk about Abraham's seed and all these things, it not necessarily mean that you're a Jew, I'm a Jew, like that. No, it's talking about, you know, as long as you accept Jesus, you know, that makes you Abraham's seed, as long as you're saved through the blood of Christ, you know. So you, we are all Abraham's seed, and that's why we have this privilege of, of sharing the gospel as well. And you know, um, <clears throat> Elder Leon and Sister Keisha, a very key point that came out um, under Wednesday's lesson mm -hmm. is that when you look at Abraham, God did not choose Abraham because he was special, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. There wasn't anything special about him. Mm -hmm. But God chose Abraham because he knew that Abraham would have accepted his grace, lived out his grace, and as, um, Abra as God said in, in the book of Genesis that Abraham would have commanded his household after exactly. him. And so today for us as Seventh-day Adventists, we are no special mm. individuals why God has called us, yeah. but God has seen that each of us will accept his grace and allow if we allow mm -hmm. his grace to be lived out in us. So here again, we're seeing the principle of freedom coming mm -hmm. in. Are we going to live out this grace that God has given to us and command our household mm -hmm. after him? Or are we just going to say, oh, I am a Seventh-day Adventist mm -hmm. and that's it, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. But there is a responsibility and we can't overlook that no. point. There is a responsibility that comes with the title Seventh-day Adventist. Mm -hmm. And may I add on to that, you're talking about live out the grace, right? And it's a res responsibility. For me, I will move on, I will compare the grace with what Wednesday is talking about, mm -hmm. the, uh, the, the covenant at Mount Sinai. You know, the, 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 the Israelites find it very hard because they look on it in this, in the, the legalism, you will say, kind of way, you know, like, I have to do this, I have to wait here for getting the foremost. Mm -hmm. Love God. Love God. This was, this, this, this was the whole purpose of it. You know, they, they, they thought that it was better. And, and, and could you imagine, when I first joined the church, I, I, I used to always hear leaders preaching, and, and, and you know, and in, in some of the sermons, they would warn us as brethren, be careful of how you make a covenant with God. You know, when you make a covenant with God, you have to live, mm -hmm. live up to it. And we see that the, 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 the Israel make a covenant with God when, 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 when God, when, it, when, when Moses give, it gave them it. Mm -hmm. They say that, you know, at the bottom of um, Wednesday lesson, they, they say that everything the Lord say we will do, they make that covenant with God themselves. And we see that they didn't even live up to it. You know, and for us as Seventh-day Adventists, it's like the same when. When you're, when you're going to get baptized, you make, you know, they ask vows and you, you agree, you accept these vows and so forth. Mm -hmm. Now we understand that it's not, oh, as you, you accept these and you baptize that you will be perfect. Because we are sinful human beings and we all fall at time. But if I truly love my wife and I make mistake, I know that I, I, I won't wait to see my wife get vexed and all this, I will go immediately. You know, apologize and try to make amends to it. And this is how our relationship with God should be. God won't expect us to be perfect immediately. But when we fall, recognize that what we have done is wrong. And we go to God. Yeah. And that's how we have this prayer relationship with God where we talk, we confess to him everything in prayer. Amen. But and, and, and in that way, we won't find the, 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 the covenant or the law of God in burden. So we won't be... in you know, treat it like, 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 like legalistic. We, we, we do it out of love because we love God. Amen. Anything, and I know we've, we have a lot. There's so many things that <clears throat> we could say concerning the lesson and what it has taught us and what should we do. But um, time is going on us. There's always a time limit, right? Yes. Time is going on us. And so is there anything that you would like to the our brethren and our listeners to know of what you've gathered from the lesson this week. Sister Michelle. Okay, so um, very quickly, the theme of Deuteronomy, we see that coming out throughout the Old Testament and even the New Testament. Mm. And the theme is obey, obey. and live. Yeah. Once you obey God, you will live. And um, 
Another point is that, and this is very important for us in the last days. Listen to this. I was, <laughs> you know, blown away when I when I read this. When Moses was given the talk to Israel, mm -hmm. they they were located on the plains of Moab. Mm -hmm. And if you know the, 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 the plains of Moab, how it is set up, just before them was the Jordan Valley, where you had the mighty high swelling river Jordan that was running right there. Also, they could see on the other side the city of Jericho. But what lies after the city of Jericho was the promised land, exactly. right? They could see it and they have been looking, this is something they have been looking forward to. They have been talking about the promised land and entering into it. But the spiritual lesson for us that we need to draw from this is that before we can enter the promised land, mm -hmm. we have to first go through the high swelling Jordan. Yeah. We have to pass and conquer the city of Jericho. The peace we don't like. The, exactly. <laughs> and when you think about the high swelling Jordan, it comes in different forms, yeah. mm -hmm. different ways. It comes through sickness. It comes through persecution. It comes through abuse. abuse. It comes in different mm -hmm. ways, right? So these are our... Um, swelling Jordans mm -hmm. that we have we have to go through it and um, the Jerichos mm -hmm. there are certain sin in our lives that we have to Get we have to of. conquer them mm -hmm. or else they are going to conquer us yep. and so in order to make it to the to the to the promised land we have, we to, pass. have to pass through this mm -hmm. journey mm -hmm. but it it is left up to us are we going to keep our eyes focused on the promised land mm -hmm. or are we going to keep our eyes focused on our high swelling jordan or our city of jericho exactly it's you our choice. it is our choice and i live with us mm -hmm. Obey and live. Amen. That is the theme of Deuteronomy. Amen. Amen. And Daniel, anything you want to add before we close? Well, I, I would just like to encourage us here and even our viewers who are watching now that if you go back to the very beginning of our, our memory text, he who does not love does not know God, for God yes. is love. What Amen. this lesson is basically trying to tell us, beloved friend, is that we, we, we serve a God who loves us despite our, our, our shortcoming, despite our wrongdoing, the way we are living. God still loves us. God still wants us. God still wants to redeem us. Mm -hmm. Now, we ought to love God out of our own free choice. And when we love God, we will find out that the, 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 the things that he expects us, us to do, the way he expects us to walk is right in his word, the Bible. We will find the Bible very cherishable something that something that is dear to us that we cannot live on this earth without and it will help us to to manifest that love to god it will help us to do what god has called us to do to show others you know the the, the, the love that god has has for them as well now you and i have a have a heavy task especially in these last days because we see that the heart of man is really becoming wax cold we see, the, the, we see sin, iniquity at, at its highest peak. But still, there is a God exists among you and I today who still love you and I, who still love these criminals, these people. And God has called us, you and I, beloved friends, to go to these people, to let them know the love that God has for them. That's the only way these people will come to, to realization and change. If not, it will, they will continue in their trespasses. So let us answer the call that God has called us to do, and that is to preach the love of God to these people, to let them know that God loves them, and he wants to save them as well. Amen. Amen. I thank you, Sister Michelle and Anil, for joining us today for a lesson study. I encourage you to study your quarterly. Um, study the book of Deuteronomy as you go through the quarterly so that you might clearly understand what, the, what lesson God has for you. Next week, lesson entitled, Moses' History Lesson. It's so very interesting, just at the memory verse that I've read. It's very um, interesting, and I encourage you to study your quarterly. Sister Michelle, would you like to close us up in prayer as our brethren prepare for the divine hour? Sure. 
Let us pray. Our great God and our Father, we are so thankful for your blessings this morning, yes. for the inspiration, the wisdom, the knowledge that we have garnered from your word. Lord, truly these are words of life that you yes. have given to us. And we pray, O oh Father, that you will help us, that we will apply these words to our hearts and to our lives, that we can be better Christians for you. I pray, Father, that you will help us, that each of us will decide in, their, in our hearts that we will choose to obey you at all times, at any cost, so that we can live the overcomer's life and we can please you. Bless us, bless the Central Church, and bless, Lord, those who are viewing, those who are listening. May their hearts be drawn closer to you as well. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 At this time, we'll go straight into our children's story segment. Hello, boys and girls. This is Aunt Fernita, and I have a wonderful story for you called New Friends. Today's memory verse is from Acts chapter 4, verse 32. It says, They shared everything they had. The message for today's story is God's children share what they have. Do you like to have company come to dinner? A long time ago, some people were just learning about Jesus. Let's imagine how one little girl and her family shared with them. Do a good job now, little Deborah, Mama said with a smile. Company is coming to dinner again tonight. Deborah looked up. Who? she asked. I don't know yet, Mama answered with a twinkle in her eye. Mama sat down and pulled little Deborah onto her lap and kissed her rosy cheek. I will explain it to you, Mama said. The apostles are preaching the good news about Jesus all over our city. They are preaching with great power, and hundreds of people are learning about Jesus every day. Deborah nodded. She knew the apostles were telling everyone about Jesus. Well, many of the new believers are from far away, Mama said. They came to Jerusalem for the great feast. They heard the apostles and learned about Jesus, and now they want to stay for a while and learn even more about him. But some are running out of money, and that's why we are helping them. We will share God's love with them by sharing our dinner. Deborah slid off Mama's lap. I better hurry and finish sweeping, she said. Mama mixed a batch of bread. She kneaded the dough and shaped it into loaves. She put the loaves into the oven, and the wonderful smell of baking bread soon filled the house. There was a knock on the door. Mama's friend scurried in. I have extra lentils, she said. I thought you might be able to use them, she said as she left. That's a lot of lentils, Mama, little Deborah said. You're right, Mama agreed. She picked up the big sack and weighed it in her hands. God is providing extra food, and this will make lots of soup. God must be bringing many people to dinner tonight, she said. How is my beautiful family? Papa's booming voice filled the house. He scooped up little Deborah and gave her a gigantic hug. He put an arm around Mama and hugged her, too. That soup sure smells good, Papa exclaimed, peering into the big pot. We're sharing our supper, Deborah exclaimed. She twirled across the floor. We're sharing God's love with the new believers. I know, Papa said. I will get cleaned up, and then we will all go to the apostles. We will find hungry believers and bring them home and feed them. And while we eat, we'll talk about Jesus, Deborah said. That's my favorite part. This podcast was brought to you by gracelink.net and Studio El Piso. For more children's resources, please visit gracelink.net. Are you ready for a revival? Come and join us. In our hearty days of prayer. From October 2nd to November 10th, 2021. Starting at 5 a.m. weekly. Powerful devotions. Intercessory prayer. Heavenly music. 
You can't afford to miss this. I will go! Thank you for joining us again here at Central Church. We are live on Facebook and on YouTube. Um, this is our Faith and also Faith FM this morning. So you can tune in as we are here to celebrate with the Lord. Um, opening song is hymn 625, 625 Higher Ground. Sing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I onward bound, Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and I shall stand, my faith on heaven's table land. A higher plane than I have found, Lord, plant my feet. this time we'll be having our intercessory prayer and so I'm going to be inviting you to bow your heads wherever you are and lift your thoughts heavenward as I pray our loving Heavenly Father Lord it's such a joy and privilege to know you to serve you and to come to you this morning in prayer Father, you have been a good God to us. Despite the challenges, despite all the problems we face on earth, you are still our Father in heaven and you have still been providing for us and caring for us on this earth. And so we just want to lift you up in praises and adoration this morning. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Thank you for blessing us throughout this week. Thank you for taking us safely to another Sabbath where we can lift our hearts, our minds in praises to you. I want to thank you this morning, Father, for the many prayers that you have answered for your people. As a central church, Lord, we met on Tuesday morning online and we lift up our hearts in prayer to you and you have answered our prayers and father we thank you for the many answers that you have given positive answers that you have given 
I pray, oh God, that today as I lift up the other requests before you, that you will hear and answer according to your will. Many of our brethren are sick and afflicted at this time, Lord. I pray that your healing balm will be upon them. I pray, oh God, that you will comfort them and strengthen them, help them to recover quickly. Those who are growing weak and weary in their spiritual walk, Lord, I pray that you will just remind them of their first love. Help their hearts to be knitted with you. I pray, Lord, that you will just continue to bless your people, whatever the affliction, whatever the circumstance that they find themselves in, that you will deliver. And even if you don't deliver, Lord, give them the grace and the strength to endure and overcome. This morning, I want to place before you your manservant whom you have chosen to speak your words to us. I pray, oh Lord, that you will once again download your message in his mind. That as he speak, Lord, we will hear your voice speaking to us. And that we will be lifted to a higher spiritual experience with you. Bless each heart, each viewer, Lord. Bless us immensely beyond and above we can ask or even imagine today. And I want to make special mention of our young people, Lord. I lift them up before you. And I ask, Father, wherever they are at this time, that your Holy Spirit will arrest their attention and help them to remember that you love them and you want them to be saved. I want to thank you, Lord, for our young people here at Central who are using their gifts to glorify you, especially in the studio at this time. Bless them continually as they unite their gifts to magnify your name. Thank you for all our leaders. Thank you for every member. Cover us under your blood and bless us today again, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. morning once again and happy sabbath just here with a couple announcements before we go into our scripture reading um for just a couple announcements one this coming sunday night and wednesday night again will be will be will be having our pastor bring it and bringing to us a message through zoom and for those who may not have access to Zoom or internet, you can listen to us through Faith FM radio station 104.5 and 94.1. So Sunday night, Wednesday night, you can join the Zoom link as our dear Pastor Campbell Senator, or, or you can listen to us via Faith FM. Also, this afternoon for our afternoon afternoon piece um, at four o'clock this afternoon um, the the program is entitled gps i won't say what it's mean for i'll let your mind bubble for that but if you want to know what gps is tune in four o'clock this afternoon and join us right here on central page as we will see what gps is remember four o'clock this afternoon for our afternoon piece and for a bridging from Central, I, I, let me remind you once more of Tuesday night prayer, I mean Tuesday morning, sorry, our prayer and fasting service. Join us at 5 o'clock, 5 o'clock. It's time for us to get out of our beauty sleep. If you want our beauty sleep, it should not continue until daybreak. Go to sleep early and you can wake up early. You can wake up at 3, 4 o'clock. That's what our Savior did. My body is already used to wake up 4 o'clock, 4.30 because I go to work that time. So I'm telling you, join us 5 o'clock for our, for our prayer and fasting service. Beautiful book right now we, we, we've been reading and discussing, which is entitled um, 
true revival. Exactly what you and I need. Not the church, but individually. You and I need that true revival. So once again, for a bridge at Central Church, join us 4 o'clock in the morning. And if you like to, if you like to join us as well, you may not have to live in Belize. You may not be a member of Central Church, but we can send you the link as well where you can tune in and join us via Zoom as we continue to read and discuss the book through revival and as we start our day of fasting and prayer. Also, we have, I have here with me the quarterly. Again, for, for a version at Central, if you want a quarterly, you can just send... Sorry, I'm holding the book back way. I'm looking, I'm looking at it for me. You can, you can just type in, you know, in, in, in a central uh, WhatsApp chat that you want a quarterly. And one of us as elders or deacon will gladly um, drop, drop it for you, the, uh, your, your quarterly. So let us know in the group chat. And I have another book here with me entitled Last Day Event. I must say, this is a powerful book. If you want the audio of it, you can, you, you can not only go on, you, you can not only go on YouTube, but you can go on Central Page and you will see all the round table segments that have been done by this book, Last Day Event. By us as elders from Central, we took time every week to break down a chapter of this book. And for those who have listened to it and still remember, what you have learned from this book, feel free to reach out to us. Last day event. This, is, this will let us know exactly the time that we are living in, beloved friends, and what we ought to do and prepare for it. So keep this announcement in mind. We have one more announcement that will be done by our dear Pastor Campbell as he, as, as he comes. But turn with me once more to Revelation chapter 12 as we go to our scripture reading. Revelation... Revelation chapter 2, sorry, verses 12 to 16. Revelation chapter 2, verses 12 to 16. And it reads, And to the angel of the church in Pergamos write, These things said, said he which had the sharp sword with two edges. I know thy works, and where thou dwellest, even where Satan Satan's seat is, and thou holdest fast my name, and hast not denied my faith, even in those days, wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you, where Satan dwelleth. But I have a few things against thee, because thou, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and to commit fornication. Verse 15 says, So hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which things I hate. And verse 16 says, Repent, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will fight against them. And, and, sorry, and I will fight against them with the sword, sword of my mouth. May the Lord add his blessing to, to his reading. And just a gentle reminder for our brethren, our tithes and our offering. If you have your tithes and offering and you would like for us as elders to pick it up, be free to contact us. I will gladly pass by. We have a pastor as well who at times will do it as well. But just a gentle reminder, we still... We still collect our tithes and our offering. This morning, we have no stranger to us who will, who will be bringing the message. Our dear pastor, Pastor Campbell, and being that we are going to be on Faith FM as well, we love to cater for our Spanish-speaking brethren as well because we know the gospel ought to be reached to every nation, tongue, kindred. So despite your language, we ought to hear the word of God this morning. So we have Pastor David Campbell and his translator, Brother Lucas Gonzalez. May the Lord continue to bless us as we tune in, as we keep tuning to our service this morning.
Thank you very much, uh, Elder Lynn, our first elder. Um, okay, so I have a, someone protecting me on this side, right here. Agradecemos so, al hermano León por la introducción y estamos ya listos, preparados para entrar en el mensaje para el día de hoy. We want to thank you very much for uh, the opportunity of allowing us in your homes. Le damos gracias por la oportunidad que nos brinda de entrar en la comunidad de su hogar. We have been in your homes for a while now. Ya hemos estado llegando a sus hogares ya por un tiempo. Through, uh, by using the vehicle uh, Faith FM. Y eso es utilizando medios como Radio Fe. YouTube. YouTube. And all the other medias that are out there. Y los otros medios de comunicación que existen. This morning, esta mañana, we celebrate today as the Sabbath of the Lord. Hoy celebramos eh, el séptimo día del Señor. And some of us has been up early from four o'clock. Y algunos desde muy temprano, antes de las cuatro, hemos estado ya en pie. And if you see right here behind me, y si usted puede ver acá atrás, we have our 40 days of prayer. Estamos celebrando 40 días de oración. This morning many of us got up at 4. I don't know what time you got up, but I got up from 3:30 this morning. Eh, hoy muchos nos levantamos temprano el pastor desde las 3 y media. And we met with five unions. Y tuvimos un encuentro virtual con cuatro uniones. The Atlantic Caribbean Union, los mencionados, the Dutch Union, the Caribbean Union, the Belize Union and the Jamaican Union. ¿Verdad? Estas cinco uniones eh, estuvieron presentes virtualmente. We believe that when you pray there is power in prayer. Nosotros creemos que cuando usted ora fervientemente hay poder en la oración. And before we get into our uh, sermon and what we're going to be talking about, uh, we're just going to show a promotion of the uh, uh, a little promotion video of our 40 days 40 days. Y antes praying. de entrar en el mensaje, vamos a estar compartiendo un video donde se promueve estos 40 días de oración. Solamente está en inglés, entonces usted puede escuchar por Radio Fe. And this time. Are you ready for a revival? Come and join us. In our 40 days of prayer. From October 2nd to November 10th, 2021. Starting at 5 a.m. weekly. Powerful devotions. Intercessory prayer. Heavenly music. You can't afford to miss this. I will go! And we will be meeting at 4 a.m. Como unión, nosotros vamos a reunirnos a las 4 de la mañana tiempo local. But from Monday to Friday, pero de los lunes a viernes, Southwest, la misión suroeste, will begin their uh, week of prayer. Uh, I mean, uh, 40 days of prayer at 5 o'clock in the el, morning. El programa iniciará a las 5 de la mañana. We go only for one hour. Y solamente es de 5 a 6, una hora. So next week, Monday. Entonces, este lunes próximo. The central mission. La misión central. Will be taken up for one week until Friday. Every morning at 5 a.m. Ellos tendrán el programa, estarán encargados del programa. Eh, de lunes a viernes de 5 a 6. And the following week, y la siguiente semana, we have not mission, tenemos la misión del norte, that will be praying from Monday to Friday from 5 a.m. for one hour. Ellos van a estar celebrando el programa de oración de 5 a 6 durante esa semana, that's, una hora. That's a lot, that's a lot of power. Bastante poder. I mean, when we finish with all those praying, because if all we do is pray and do nothing, then uh, that would defeat the purpose, right? Porque si solamente estamos orando y no haciendo nada más, entonces estamos eh, dándole poco éxito al programa. And so we're going to pray and we're going to work. 
Entonces haremos dos cosas. Vamos we, a orar y trabajar. We're going to work and we're going to pray. Vamos a trabajar y orar. That is the watch word for us Seventh-day Adventists. Y esa es la palabra clave para nosotros como pueblo adventista del séptimo día. There's power in prayer. Hay uh, poder en la oración. Let us pray. Entonces oremos. Father, we want to thank you again for your goodness. Padre celestial, una vez más le damos gracias por su bondad. For your mercy to us as your people. Por su misericordia hacia nosotros como pueblo suyo. This morning we are here to lift up your name. Esta mañana estamos para ensalzar su nombre. And to exalt you above all the gods of this earth. Y exaltarlo sobre todos los dioses de esta tierra. You and you only to be worshipped. Usted y usted nada más será adorado. No idol, no man. Ningún ídolo, ningún hombre. But God. Sino que Dios. Bless us today. Bendíganos ahora, Padre. Bless Faith FM Radio Station. Bendiga eh, el ministerio de Radio Fe. And all of us who are here this morning. Y todos los que estamos reunidos en esta mañana. To get the word out. Para poder compartir su palabra. Bless Central Church. Bendiga la Iglesia Central. And the brethren. Y los hermanos. In Jesus' name. Pedimos en el nombre de Cristo Jesús. Amen. Amen. So my subject this morning. Entonces el tema para esta mañana. You are protecting me, so you have to come over on this side here. You're in my screen right over there, right? So that's why you're wearing the mask. Okay. Okay. And so uh, my screen will be on that side. Okay. So I have to stand here. Okay. So so uh, <laughs> our subject is this morning. Entonces el tema para esta mañana. Uh, I think you can come up a little bit more because they want to see your pretty face too, right? Even though we're on the radio station, right? <laughs> Let me do the work. Compromise, yes. Uh, we have to say something before. Vamos antes de entrar en el mensaje. Le recordamos que usted escucha Radio Fe. Radio Fe en las frecuencias de 94.1, 104.5. A donde quiera que nos escuchen esta mañana. Vamos a eh, estar, en, o estamos en vivo eh, por esta mañana. También por eh, la Iglesia Central. El link de la Iglesia Central. We remind you that you are listening to Fear FM. Fear FM on 94.1, 104.5. Wherever it is that you are listening to us on this beautiful Sabbath morning, we thank you for being in our company. We are live also on Central yeah. uh, and other... And also well. we are live on Southwest Mission YouTube. Okay, and if you, if you come on the line, you will see a very beautiful outline. Very beautiful. Am I right? It's yes. very beautiful. Si yeah. usted también va a la página de YouTube, Southwest Belize Mission, ahí nos podrá ver. So our subject is... Compromise. Entonces, eh, el tema lleva por título Haciendo eh, Decisiones que nos pondrán en problema. Vamos a poner Compromise. Los sí. I'm going to ask to turn with me if you have your Bible. Entonces, con Biblia en mano. To uh, Revelation chapter 2 and verse 12. Vamos a ir al libro de Apocalipsis capítulo 2, versículo 12. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 12. El libro de Apocalipsis, capítulo 2, versículo 12. And the Bible says, And to the angel of the church in per Pergamos, thank you very much, Elder Neil, for reading for us, these, write these things, saith he, which had the sharp sword with two hedges. Apocalipsis, capítulo 2, versículo 12, rápidamente, estamos teniendo problemas técnicos, 2, 12, dice así, rápidamente, uh, Y escribe al ángel de la iglesia en Pérgamo, el que tiene la espada aguda de dos filos, dice estas cosas. He says, I know thy works and, and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is, and thou holdest fast my name, and hast not denied my faith, even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you, where Satan dwelleth. Versículo 13, dice así, Y yo sé tus obras, conozco tus obras, y a dónde moras, donde está la silla de Satanás, y retienes mi nombre, y no has negado mi fe, aún en los días en que fue Antipas mi testigo fiel, el cual ha sido muerto entre vosotros, donde Satanás more. For those of you who listen to me, you, you might have heard me preach on the subject, I am rich, but you are rich. Hemos, eh, quizás ha escuchado el pastor presentar el mensaje, soy rico, mas sois ricos. We took the first, I mean the first church before it, which was Smyrna. Hemos, en ese mensaje, 
eh, presentado en la iglesia anterior, la iglesia de Smirna. But here we are now in Pergamos. Pero ahora estamos en la iglesia de Pérgamo. And the Bible said where this church uh, is, uh, that's where Satan dwells. Y la Biblia dice que a donde está esa iglesia es a donde Satanás habita. Imagínese. The Bible said even his faithful servants was martyred. Dice la Biblia que aún los siervos fiel de Cristo Jesús eh, fueron martirizados. Verse 14 says, But I have a few things against thee because thou hast there then that hold the doctrine of Balaam who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed unto idols and to commit fornication. Vamos a leer Apocalipsis 2, 14, no me está, dice así, pero tengo unas, cos, unas pocas cosas contra ti, porque tú tienes ahí los que tienen la doctrina de allí, los que tienen la doctrina de Fobalam, el cual enseñaba a Balak a poner escándalo de, delante de los hijos de Israel, a comer de cosas sacrificadas a los ídolos y a cometer Fornicación. The subject is compromise. El tema es haciendo arreglos que no deberíamos. Verse 15 went on to say, so has thou also, so, so that thou also of them that hold the doctrine of nicotines, nicolatans, which things I hate. Dice versículo 15, así también tú tienes a los que tienen la doctrina de los nicolaitas, lo cual yo aborrezco. He says repent. We didn't hear that about uh, 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 Smyrna, but now he's talking to Pergamos. Repent or else I will come unto thee quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Versículo 16. Arrepiente te dice, porque de otra manera vendré a ti presto y pelearé contra ellos con la espada de mi boca. No escuchamos esto para la iglesia de Smyrna. The church of Smyrna. La iglesia de Smyrna. The church of Pergamos. La iglesia de Pergamo. The church of Ephesus. La iglesia de Éfeso. And all the seven churches. Y las siete iglesias. Jesus either had commendation or rebuke. Eh, Jesús tenía una de dos cosas. Ya sea eh, les hablaba de sus buenas obras o les tenía que castigar. But he always put in something in it to tell them as no matter how far you've gone, you still can be saved. Pero siempre les daba una palabra de ánimo diciéndoles, no importa cuánto hayas caído, aún puedes ser salvo. Watch this now. He that hasn't heard, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh, will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and I will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that Receive it if. Versículo 17. El que tiene oído, oiga lo que el Espíritu dice a las iglesias. Al que venciere, daré a comer del maná escondido y le daré una piedrita blanca y en la piedrecita un nombre nuevo escrito, el cual ninguno conoce sino aquel que lo recibe. Now, for those of you who, are, uh, who like Revelation, you will know that Revelation actually repeats itself. Y para los que les encanta leer el libro de Apocalipsis, se da cuenta que se repite. Revelation chapter 2 and 3, you can find it in Revelation chapter 6. Lo que está en Apocalipsis 2 y 3 también está en Apocalipsis 6. You can also find Revelation chapter 6 in Revelation chapter 12. También lo que está en Apocalipsis 6 está en Apocalipsis 12. And Revelation chapter, 14, and Revelation chapter 13. Y también en Apocalipsis 13. You can find it again come around in chapter 17. También ve que se repite en Apocalipsis 17. So when you go to Revelation chapter 6. Y cuando usted, por ejemplo, lee Apocalipsis 6. And with those seven seals. Y los siete sellos. The Bible make mention of the third seal and it refers to it as a rider riding a white, a, a black horse. La Biblia se refiere a ello como un jinete sobre un caballo negro. And when you see black, what comes to mind? Y cuando usted ve la palabra negro, ¿qué es lo que automáticamente viene a su mente? Not me, I'm not black. No al pastor, porque no, él so no es moreno, ¿verdad? Christian. <laughs> Somos cristianos. Watch this now. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse. And he that sat upon him had a pair of balances in his hand. 
Apocalipsis capítulo 6, versículo 5 dice, y cuando él abrió el tercer sello, oí al tercer eh, ser viviente que decía, ven y ve y miré, y he aquí un caballo negro y el que estaba sentado encima de él tenía un, pe un peso en su mano. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, a measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny, and see thou earth not the oil and the wine. Versículo 6, y oí una voz en medio de los cuatro seres vivientes que decía, dos libras de trigo por un denario, y seis libras de cebada por un denario, y no hagas daño al vino ni al aceite. These two chapters that we have just read, estos dos capítulos que leímos, has given us a peek into the future. Nos da un vistazo al futuro. Let me repeat that. Vamos a repetirlo. In the past. En el pasado. And what took place. Y lo que sucedió. And what all Christians should know. Y lo que todos cristianos y todos debemos saber. Because it gives the history of our birth as a Christian. Porque da el historial de nuestro nacimiento como iglesia Cristiana. And why we're here today. Y la razón por la cual estamos o existimos hoy día. And why there are so many different churches and confusion. Y por qué, hay, o qué, por qué existen tantas iglesias y tanta confusión. If they did the, if we do our homework. Si hacemos la tarea o investigamos. Then we would be confused. Entonces no estaríamos confundidos. Have you seen some children come to school and the teacher gave them their homework the day before and they didn't do their homework and they're peeping out, pe peeking over, you know, somebody else's book. They're confused. They don't know what to do. Por ejemplo, los muchachos antes venían, a la, antes de la pandemia asistían a la, la escuela, perdón, regularmente. El maestro deja tarea, no lo hacen. Al otro día llegan, no saben qué hacer. Ahí quieren espiar en el libro del... Compañero. The Apostle Paul. El Apostle Pablo. In the second letter to the Thessalonians. Segundo libro de Tesalonicenses. Foretold the great apostasy which would result in the establishment of the papal power. Now we, it's history we're talking about. It's eh, history. Hablando de un poco de historia de este mundo, el gran Apostle Pablo, él ya había predicho eh, cómo este sistema papal iba a estar bien estructurado y iba a estar en lugar. I'm going all the way back in 100 A.D. Estamos regresando al año 100 después de Cristo. And I'm going to bring you up to speed to 2021. Y vamos a traerle hasta el presente este año eh, que estamos 2021. The Apostle Paul declares that the day of Christ should not come. El apóstol Pablo declara que el día de Cristo no vendría. Except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin. Let's read it right there on the screen. In the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition segunda de tesalonicenses capítulo 2 versículo 3 dice no os engañe nadie en ninguna manera porque no vendrá sin que venga antes la apostasía y se manifieste el hombre de pecado el hijo de la perdición who opposeth And exalt, watch these words now, they're in the Bible, everybody. You all need to go back there. History, I mean, the Bible can never go. Why well, we want to go back to 10 billion years ago when there's no such thing like that? La pregunta es, ¿por qué cuando queremos regresar a ver lo que la historia nos enseña, ¿por qué queremos ir miles de millones de años que ni siquiera existe cuando la Biblia tiene la historia de este mundo? What about a thousand years ago? Nobody knew anything about it because they have not studied history. Cuando unos mil años atrás nadie sabía de ello porque no habían estudiado la historia. There was a power around, around who opposed and exalted himself above all that is called God or that is worship, so that he, as God, sitting in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. En ese tiempo como ahora existía este este poder conocida como Roma y dice versículo 4, oponiéndose y levantándose contra todo lo que se llama Dios o que se adora tanto que se asiente en el templo de Dios como Dios haciéndose parecer Dios. You will notice that John the Revelator or John the Beloved and Paul are on the very same page. Por favor, note cuidadosamente que el apóstol Pablo y Juan, el amado y el escribió, 
el libro de Apocalipsis están hablando de lo mismo. Because John refers to the Antichrist and he didn't say the Antichrist is coming into the future. He said the Antichrist is now. He's right here now. And you, you're referring to some 1,400 uh, years ago. Y Juan, que escribió el libro de Apocalipsis, dice el Anticristo no vendrá en un tiempo futuro, sino es que está acá, ya establecido. Y este es eh, 1,400 años atrás, imagínense. Furthermore, the Apostle Paul warns his brethren that the mystery, watch this now, verse 7, for the mystery of iniquity doeth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Mire, en el versículo 7, el apóstol advierte al pueblo, dice, porque ya está obrando el misterio de iniquidad. Solamente espere hasta que sea quitado de en medio el que ahora impide. Even at that early date, He saw that Paul creeping into the church arrows that would prepare the way for the development of the papacy. Remember, it's history we are talking about. Think that ahora, happens to me. Hablando de un poco de la historia de este mundo, aún ese tiempo, esa edad temprana, Pablo pudiera ver en visión, por así decir, o mirar hacia el futuro y ver cómo en la iglesia iban a empezar a entrar errores y el establecimiento de este sistema papal. So I'm going to call names. Entonces vamos a mencionar algunos nombres específicos. Because when you're going through history, you have to talk about what happened then. Porque cuando estudiamos la historia de este mundo, uh, vemos lo que sucedió en este tiempo y los personajes de ese tiempo. Little by little. Poco a poco. At first in stealth and silence. Primeramente, oh, eh, sí, al principio silenciosamente y cuidadosamente. How it happened? ¿Cómo sucedió? Tell, there, there's, a, there's a plane. When I put in this word, I see America, they have a plane right there. You can't even hear the plane when it's coming, a big one, you know, a very terrible aeroplane. Y cuando yo menciono esto, recuerdo, los Estados Unidos tiene un avión de guerra que aunque es grande, usted no lo es. It bypass no any, uh, radar. what those, uh, radar. radar, yeah, it can fly beneath it. Y puede eh, volar y andar sin que los radares puedan eh, verlo en la pantalla. And you're surprised. I mean, the whole place is on fire, like what we see happening in Honduras. You all, well, somebody sent me something. The whole Honduras is just burning down houses. Y vemos como hay incendios por diferentes Pray for the partes. Brethren, dear. Eh, alguien me mandó un, un, un video que en Honduras hay gran incendio ahora. Stealthy in silence, and then more openly as it increased in strength and gained control of the minds of men. That's how Satan working up. Y dice que al principio, silenciosamente, pero aún con bastante potencia y fuerza, y luego a, a, abiertamente y ya con más poder, a, tomando control de la mente de los hombres. One writer said, history will repeat itself. And what I'm going to be showing you and saying today, you will see that happening right now. History will repeat itself. Y como alguien ha dicho, la historia siempre se repite. Y usted verá, basado en lo que estamos presentando hoy y lo que estamos hablando, se verá cómo es verdad que la historia se repite. Openly as it increased in strength, it gained control of the minds of men. The mystery of iniquity carried forward its deceptive and blasphemous work almost without anybody touching it. Y este poder ahora abiertamente y ya con más fuerza va avanzando, tomando control y este poder de iniquidad y blasfemia obrando como si nadie se está dando cuenta de lo que está sucediendo. Brethren, when I preach on the subject, uh, 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 but we are rich, I show you that the church of Smyrna went on the persecution as never before. We have seen a, a, a people persecuted. Y cuando estudiamos el tema, eh, más vosotros sois ricos, estudiamos acerca de la experiencia de la iglesia de Smyrna que pasó un tiempo de persecución como ningún otro pueblo ha vivido. Millions of Christians died. By the way, I, when I was preaching the sermon, I said you could not find one hypocrite in that church. Y millones de cristianos perecieron, perdieron la vida. Y al presentar el mensaje dije, mire, no hallabas ni siquiera un hipócrita en la iglesia en ese tiempo. Why? ¿Por qué? If you baptize today, porque si hoy te bautizas, tomorrow you will find yourself, or you may find yourself in the belly of a lion. Mañana puedes ya estar en el estómago de un león. Or on the feet of a maddened elephant. O quizás siendo pisoteado bajo los pies de un elefante muy airado. Or being burned to the stake 
o quemado vivo como si uno fuese leña. And no hypocrite want that to happen. Y ningún hipócrita quiere que le suceda so eso. So while persecution was going on, they saw a way in which they can compromise to ease the persecution. Y por la persecución y la fuerza de la persecución, entonces la, la iglesia empieza a hacer arreglos para tratar de ver cómo pueden llegar a un acuerdo para que eh, la persecución no sea tanto. And so the spirit of compromise and conformity was restrained for a time by the fierce persecution which the church endured on the paganism. Entonces, por un tiempo, eh, entró, entraron los acuerdos y uh, empezaron a poner los principios en peligro para poder saciar la persecución. In other words, the church went under persecution and the church was under run. So there's no one there to compromise. En este tiempo, por la persecución que la iglesia pasaba, eh, todo el mundo tenía que andar huyendo y no tenían tiempo para llegar a acuerdos o hacer arreglos con el mundo. But when the, when the persecution ceases, pero cuando la persecución cesa, and Christianity enter the courts and the palaces of the kings, y ahora la persecución o la, el cristianismo puede entrar en los palacios y los atrios del rey, and she lay aside her humble simplicity of Christ and is apostle for the pomp and pride of pagan priests. Ahora dejan a un lado la sencillez y ese manto de, de, de humildad de Cristo Jesús para cambiarlo con toda la luz y la gloria de lo que el mundo tiene que ofrecer. And rulers of the world. Y los gobernantes de este mundo. And in place of the requirements of God, she substituted human theories for, for, and traditions. Y ahora en vez de los principios bíblicos, eh, están eh, cambiándolos por tradiciones y teorías humanas. I see somebody asking a minister once, what is his view and homosexuality? Y un tiempo atrás vi que alguien le preguntó a un líder religioso, ¿cuál es tu punto de vista en esto de lo del homosexualismo? And not to be, and for, for him not to be looked upon in society as one that have this phobia about, about, they have another word for it. Uh, 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 is yeah. phobia as a name? Yeah, phobia. Yeah, phobia. Y para que este líder religioso no se viese como aquellos que tienen esta fobia, este odio contra eh, todo esto del homosexualismo. As if he's from space, he said, well, everybody has to live their life the way they live their life and God save everybody according to the way they live. Y como si fuese de otro planeta, dice, bueno, todo mundo tiene que vivir la vida como puede y Dios va a salvar a todo mundo de acuerdo a sus conocimientos. But never once did he say that that type of lifestyle is abomination and unless you change, you can never be saved. God will save a man not in sin. Pero jamás mencionó este líder religioso que ese tipo de vida, estilo de vida, es abominable. Es una abominación ante Jehová Dios. Dios nunca salvará una persona en pecado. God love homosexual. Dios ama a los homosexuales. But he hates sí. homosexuality. Mas aborrece la acción de ser uh, de homosexualidad. Yeah. God love the sinner. Dios ama al pecador. But he hates the sin. Mas aborrece el pecado que el pecador comete. But back there, because they want to be in the limelight, they want to be along with the kings and all of those, they throw off Christianity. Pero en ese tiempo, por querer estar en moda y estar con los reyes y los gobernantes de este mundo, desecharon los principios bíblicos. And then at the nominal conversion of, of a Constantine came in in the early part of the fourth century. Y luego al principio del cuarto siglo, ahora tenemos la conversión de este que era un, un líder en el mundo. Constantine, Constantine was looked upon as the ruler of the world. Constantino en ese tiempo era el líder máximo en el mundo. And he got converted. Y él supuestamente se convirtió, se bautizó. Cause a great joy. Y causó gran gozo, digamos. And the world cloaked with a form of righteousness walk into the church because Constantine is in it. Y ahora el mundo y todo eh, lo mundanal está vestido con un vestimento de cristianismo y entró en la iglesia 
por el, la conversión de Jesús. Y cuando él se y cuando ahora él es cristiano, the pagan came in. vinieron las prácticas paganas. Now the work of corruption rapidly progress. Ahora la obra de corrupción puede progresar rápidamente. Paganism, while appearing to be uh, uh, vanquished, cuando apareciera que el paganismo había desaparecido, became the conqueror. llegó a entonces ser el conquistador. And so more and more, Christianity is going down. Y ahora más y más las normas del cristianismo están disminuyendo. Her spirit controls the church. I'm talking paganism. Y ahora paganismo está controlando la iglesia. Her doctrines, her ceremonies. Las ceremonias, las doctrinas. Superstitious, superstitions. Mucha superstición en la iglesia en ese tiempo. Were y ahora, incorporated in the faith and the worship of the professed followers of Christ. Fue incorporado tanto que ahora los llamados, supuestos llamados seguidores de Cristo, es parte de sus creencias. And so about a thousand years ago, entonces unos mil años atrás, this compromise between paganism and Christianity result in the development Of the, what the Bible calls the men of sin. Este acuerdo entre el paganismo y el cristianismo resulta en lo que la Biblia llama el hombre del pecado. Foretold in prophecy as opposing and exalted himself above all that is called God. Que ya se había predicho en la Biblia que haría dos cosas, exaltándose y oponiéndose a todo lo que se llama y es Dios. You know Satan tried it with Jesus. ¿Sabía usted que Satanás trató de hacer lo mismo con Jesús? Jesus? Jesus. Cuando Jesús andaba sobre la faz de esta tierra, eh, Satanás quería hacerse socio con Jesús. Dijo, you know? mira, podemos los dos gobernar el Put universo. Me on pedestal. Put me up there. Ponme en el pedestal, ponme arriba. Worship me. Adórame, le dice and Satanás. And we Jesús. will kick out God and we will rule the world. Y vamos a derribar a Dios y eh, ambos hemos de gobernar este mundo. You already know how that turned out, right? Ya sabemos cuál fue el resultado de eso. All Jesus did was to rebuke that no good Satan. Y lo que hizo Jesús es eh, llamarle la atención a ese mal bicho. And Jesus said, thou shalt worship. Luke chapter 4 and verse 8. Don't forget this, my dear brothers and sisters and friends who are listening. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou what? Serve. Y por favor, queridísimos hermanos, hermanas, amigos, los que nos ven y escuchan, Lucas capítulo 4, versículo 8, 8 perdón, nunca olvide esto, dice así. Y respondiendo Jesús le dijo, vete de mí, Satanás, porque escrito está a tu Señor Dios, adorarás y a él solamente servirás. Now I've been reading this Bible for years. Y hemos estado leyendo la Biblia ya por años. And never once I've ever seen an int in this Bible. Y jamás he visto una pulgada o una parte de esa Biblia. Nowhere in the Word of God. Ninguna parte en la Biblia. That tells me. Que me dice. That God appointed any man to be head over the church. Dios ha puesto a nombrado a nadie, ningún hombre que sea cabeza de la iglesia. So sometimes when I listen to Seventh Day Adventist talk, I'm wondering, which church are they from again? Y a veces cuando escucho hermanos adventistas del séptimo día hablando diciendo cosas, digo, ¿a cuál I iglesia said, pertenecen? I heard some of them said, hey, hey, uh, Adventists are not saying anything. They are quiet. The church is not saying anything. Y ahora escucho personas decir, ¿y qué pasó con la iglesia adventista del séptimo día? Los líderes, then, los pastores, then, callados, no dicen nada. Then what come to mind? Who is the church? Entonces pienso, ¿y quién es la iglesia? The Bible says where one or two are, God is in the midst. La Biblia nos deja saber a dónde están reunidos uno o dos. So the two of us are here. We are the church. Y acá hemos dos, somos la iglesia. I don't have to wait for the church to say anything. I can say something. Yo no tengo que esperar que los líderes eh, anuncien algo. Yo puedo hablar en contra de lo que sea. I open my big mouth. Abro mi, mi bocota. Ella and I take two little, what, what they call us on again. The mega horns. The mega horns. They say we're going to the market to preach. Why are we going to the market to preach? Because that's where the church is. Unos días atrás tomamos dos eh, de estos micrófonos y fuimos al mercado para hablar. ¿Y por qué? Allá está la iglesia. You know, the market is so packed with people. You know? Usted vea cómo allá en el mercado hay tantas personas reunidas. So we go there to preach. Entonces fuimos a predicar. I don't have to wait on the church. I'm the church. I need to go and do something for God. Yo no tengo que esperar que la iglesia en conjunto. Yo puedo hacer mi parte 
por y para el Señor. As much as we love our general conference president, he's not the head of the church. Jesus is the head of the church. Come on and say amen. Y apreciamos al presidente de la iglesia mundial, pero él no es el la cabeza o el líder máximo de la iglesia. As much Cristo as we Jesús love our union president, es el, es el la cabeza aunque apreciamos al presidente de la unión aquí en Belice. He, God didn't appoint him to be the head of the church. Jesus is the head of the church. Dios no lo ha puesto a él como cabeza de la iglesia. Jesús es la cabeza de la iglesia. And get this, the gate of hell cannot prevail against. Y por Come favor, on, recuerde amen. que las puertas del Hades jamás prevalecerán contra la iglesia. So the doctrine of papal supremacy. Entonces esta doctrina de eh, el sistema papal el, siendo superior About a thousand years ago, eh, que surgió como mil años atrás is directly opposed to the teachings of the scriptures. está directamente oponiéndose a la enseñanza bíblica. No man has power over Christ church except by you uh, usurping it. Usurping. Nadie, ninguna persona tiene eh, control o potestad sobre la iglesia de Cristo al menos que es que lo está usurpando. It was by the word. Listen to me, my dear brothers and sisters and friends. It was by the word that even the savior of the world had resisted his attacks. Mire, escucha que dice sobre hermano, hermano, amigo. Fue por la palabra de Dios que aún el Señor resistió el ataque de este sistema. At every insult, eh, cuando, en cada insulto, Christ presented the shield of eternal truth to the devil by saying it is written. Eh, cada vez que se presentó Satanás, Cristo Jesús eh, usó el escudo de la palabra de Dios recordando escrito está. But I'm talking about compromise this morning. Hablando de acuerdos que no debemos de hacer en esta mañana. My dear brothers and sisters and friends, queridísimos hermanos, hermanas y amigos, the Bible would, ex would exalt God la Biblia exalta a Dios and place finite men in their true position. y pone hombres finitos, hombres mortales en el lugar que les, les corresponde. Therefore, its secret truth must be concealed and suppressed. Por lo tanto, los secretos de los hombres o opiniones deben ser eh, suprimidos y oprimidos. And so if you notice what has been happening taking Obligado. place some, uh, 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 almost some 10 to 15 years ago, entonces, si usted ve lo que sucedió unos 10, 15 años atrás, the entertainment, eh, el negocio de entretenimiento, the sports, deportes, even amidst a crisis, está enfrentando un cri we crisis. Still have Olympic. Todavía, oh, perdón, a pesar de la crisis, if you can keep the minds of the people on a lower stage, they don't read the Bible, they kill them with entertainment. Por ejemplo, vemos que aún en, durante la pandemia tuvieron las, los Juegos Olímpicos. Mantener la mente ocupada para no pensar en cosas espirituales. Manténlos ocupados con todo tipo de deporte y entretenimiento. People are caught up with the things of this world, so they have no time. Basketball and football and, and what type of ball again? All type of balls. <laughs> Y mire, lo que sucede es que estamos involucrados en tanto deporte y entretenimiento, en baloncesto, fútbol, todo tipo de deporte que no tenemos tiempo para leer la palabra de Dios. Somebody said, watch it. <laughs> no, my dear brothers and sisters and friends. Pues algunos no lo jugamos, pero How lo vemos. How the devil gets in the church was to distract the minds of the people so that they cannot make an intelligent decision because they never used to read in this book. Y la pregunta diría yo, o haría, ¿por qué fue que Satanás entró a la iglesia? Fue para mantener la mente de eh, los feligreses ocupados, desviarlos de leer la palabra de Dios y entonces no tienen tiempo para pasar con Dios. So almost 2000 and let me go a little further. Almost 2300 years ago, the people were forbidden to read it. That's the book or to have it in their houses. It was illegal for you to have a Bible. Entonces, unos 2300 años atrás era ilegal, era prohibido tener una Biblia, leerla o eh, que te encuentren con ella en tu casa. And an principal priest, but the I'm talking about, I'm talking about, hear me out now. Is is we talking about, right? These on principal priests. Y recuerde estamos hablando de historia de este mundo. Estos sacerdotes 
sin principio, interpret its teaching so to sustain their pretense. Ellos interpretaban la Biblia para ma mantener lo que están pretendiendo. So if you were caught with the Bible, entonces si te sorprendían con una Biblia, they would kill you. Muerte. And the Bible said where there is no vision, the people perish. Y la Biblia dice el pueblo perece por falta de visión. When you don't read the Bible, you don't have wisdom, you don't know anything. Cuando no leemos la Biblia, no tenemos sabiduría, no sabemos nada. Thy word have I what? Place in their heart that they may what? Not sin against me. Not sin against me. Thank you. ¿Qué dice la Biblia? Eh, hemos escondido o hemos puesto la palabra de Dios en nuestro corazón para no pecar contra él. So Bible were taken away. Entonces el, la Biblia fue quitado del pueblo. Removido. Thus the men of God walked in the church. Entonces estos supuestos hombres de Dios entraron a la iglesia. And what they did was to bring one of the greatest error of all time. Y en, introducieron a la iglesia uno de los errores más grandes de la historia de este mundo. You have to understand that because Satan could not get God, Jesus to work along with him, men open up themselves for him to work and Satan established his church and earth. Y hay que entender que ya que Satanás no logró que Jesús fuese socio suyo, entonces obró por medio de hombres, líderes de la iglesia, que se hicieron disponibles para que Satanás trabaje con ellos. And Satan went after the only commandment that dispute, disputed his claim y as a God. Satanás fundó su iglesia. Ahora Satanás eh, lanza una guerra contra el mandamiento que demuestra Christian were killed. Que él no es Dios. Los cristianos fueron Christian were thrown to wild animals. Fueron yeah, echados thing. a animales silvestres para que se los. But watch this now. I'm gonna read a verse. Vamos a leer un. It's not here on the screen, but I'm gonna read it right here in the book of Daniel, chapter 7 and verse 25. This happened during the time which history had as dark ages. Vamos a leer del libro de Daniel, capítulo 7, versículo 25, y esto literalmente sucedió. Durante eh, la parte de la historia de este mundo conocido como la Edad Oscura. Listen, if you don't have knowledge of, of a thing, you, you, they wouldn't trouble you. You know, that doesn't really, as they said, you can even drink, you even drink poison and it doesn't trouble you if you don't have knowledge, it's poison. I want to see you do that. Y dicen lo que, ¿cómo va? Lo que no sabemos no nos hierre, no nos puede lastimar. Imagínese si usted toma veneno, ¿no le va a hacer mal? Yo quiero ver eso. You know, you know, men sit around table and the wife says, oh, get rid of that rascal a long time ago, you know. Y a veces el esposo está ahí, la esposa en su mente dice, me voy a deshacer de este mal bicho. Oh, he doesn't know it is poison, so he drank it, he will not die. Él no sabe que es veneno, entonces lo tomó, no va a morir. So what the enemy did was to persecute the church and to take away the Bible. And so the enemy came in, in the book of Daniel chapter 7 and verse 25, and the enemy This. I'm talking about what took place some 1,200 or some 1,300 years ago. Not long ago. It's not a billion years ago. Y estamos hablando de lo que sucedió unos 1,200, 1,300 años atrás. No es tanto tiempo como millones, billones de años. Vemos como Satanás persigue al pueblo de Dios, ¿verdad? It Para que él about, pueda establecer su iglesia. But almost 300 years after the death of Christ. Is what unos 300 said. años después de la muerte de Cristo Jesús, veamos. Daniel 7, verse 25, the Bible says, And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and shall think to change times and laws, and they shall be given unto him until a time, and times, and dividing of time. Y hablará palabras contra el Altísimo, y a los santos del Altísimo quebrantará y pensará en cambiar los tiempos y la ley y serán entregados en su mano hasta tiempo y tiempos y la mitad de un tiempo. Prophecy had declared that the papacy was to think, to what? Think. To think, to change times and laws. La profecía declara, nos muestra que el sistema papal pensaría, pensaría en cambiar los tiempos y la ley. This work, it, it was not slow to attempt the, the, uh, what the enemy did, my dear brothers and sisters, having, having eaten in the church. Y eh, ellos trataron de hacer esta obra, no lo hicieron silenciosamente, sino que lo hicieron abiertamente y rápidamente, trayendo incrédulos a la iglesia. Worshiping Jupiter, worshiping the sun. 
al, esas personas o oh, sí quienes uh, adoraban a Júpiter o al Sol and you don't want to offend them y ya que no queremos ofender a nadie so they go along with it entonces lo permiten you see you have to understand the Eden used to worship the S-U-N the Sun estas personas de este tiempo adoraban el Sol they worship the moon y la luna and now they're coming into the church by the hundreds yeah by the thousand and you want to keep them with the money y ahora se están, en ese tiempo, se están uniendo a la iglesia por los centenares, por los miles, y quieren mantenerlos en la iglesia porque tienen plata. Leaders of government coming in, and so you don't want to, you don't want to rock the boat, so you compromise. Entonces están entrando líderes de, de, del mundo, líderes del de gobierno, y uno quiere estar en paz, entonces permite que estas cosas sucedan. If you go back in history, si usted regresa a la historia de este mundo, up until the last disciple, the death of the last disciple, hasta John, la muerte del último discípulo, el discípulo Juan, every man on earth, toda persona sobre la faz de esta tierra, who worshipped God, que adoraba a Dios, the true and living God, el Dios verdadero vivo, was worshiping God and keeping all His ten commandments, including the seventh day Sabbath. Eh, adoraba a Dios y guardaba los diez mandamientos incluyendo el cuarto mandamiento que habla del séptimo día, día de reposo. But when the pagan came in, Pero cuando entraron los paganos, you have two day clashes. You have the Sabbath and now you have Sunday. Hay un choque entre dos días de adoración, el séptimo día sábado y el primer día de la semana, el domingo. But they have killed so many Christians. Pero ya han matado tantos cristianos. And Sunday became popular. Y ahora el domingo, la oración del domingo llega a ser lo común, popular. History habit to say, and you can read it when you have time, in AD 21. Y en el año 2, 321. Perdón, 321 después de Cristo. The Sabbath was changed. El sábado, séptimo día de reposo, fue cambiado. It was forced and God's people. Fue forzado sobre el pueblo de Dios en ese tiempo. It became a law. Llegó a ser ley. Are you listening to me out there? Nos escuchan esta mañana. And then... That day, which is the first day of the week, y ahora este día, el primer día de la semana, became popular. Llegó a ser popular, común. So watch this now, my dear brothers and sisters and friends. Entonces, por favor, entienda que le dice mi hermano, hermana, amiga. God never changed. Dios nunca hizo el cambio. God is the same today. Dios es el mismo ayer. Yesterday. Hoy. And he will be the God forever. Y será Dios para siempre por los siglos. God is God. Dios es Dios, no cambia. And there's no other gods with him. Y no hay otro Dios delante él. God doesn't stoop low to us. Dios no es como si se rebajas a nosotros. We have to come up to God. Sino que nosotros tenemos que subir. In the book of Genesis chapter 2 and verse 1, the Bible tells us. En Génesis capítulo 2, versículo 1, la Biblia dice. Thus the heavens and the earth. We're finished and all the hosts of them. Y fueron creados los cielos y la tierra y todo el hueste celestial. And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had. Let me, let me go back a little bit here. I, I missed something right here. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 so let me go to this verse before I go to that one. In Luke chapter 4 and verse 14. Antes de Génesis, vamos a ir a Lucas 2, 14. Jesus. Jesus. Return in the power. And the spirit in Galilee, and there went out a fame of him. I'm talking about now the creator God came in the garb. He put on the suit of a man. He came and he walked the earth. Uh, there went out a fame of him throughout all the region about. And he taught in the synagogues, being glorified of all. It's Luke 2, 14. Luke 4, verse 14 and 15. Perdón. Pardon me. Luke 4? Yeah. Leyendo de Lucas, capítulo 14, versículos... Lucas capítulo 4, perdón, versículos 14 y 15, hablando de Jesús, que era Dios, se vistió de hombre y vino sobre la faz de esta tierra, dice así. Y Jesús volvió en virtud de Espíritu a Galilea y salió la fama de él por toda la tierra de alrededor. And when he came here, y cuando estuvo sobre esta tierra, he reinforced, él eh, reinforzó, por así decirlo, the creator God. O habló más acerca del Dios you see, creador. You have to understand, the Sabbath is no little... Uh, Common, the seventh day is no common day. You know, the seventh day, the Bible said, is the Lord's day. There's a reason why that was statement was made. Y lo que sucede es que el séptimo día no es cualquier día común ni corriente, sino que es el día de reposo 
de Jehová vuestro Dios. Y hay una razón por la cual se hizo esa declaración. Because of all the commandments of the Ten Commandments, porque entre los diez mandamientos de todos los diez mandamientos, is the only one. El cuarto es el único that tells you que nos indica who is the creator of heaven and earth. Quién es el creador de los cielos y la tierra. To remove that completely out. Entonces si lo quitamos completamente, you will not know who is your creator God. Entonces ya no sabremos quién es nuestro Dios creador. It's the only commandment. Es el único mandamiento that challenges some of these scientists. Que desafía a algunos científicos. I said some of these scientists. So don't take me off YouTube now. Some, not all. Ahora algunos por favor no nos bajen de YouTube. I got cut off more than once. Porque ya so let me some of these scientists. Algunos de estos científicos who challenge the existence of God que desafían aún la existencia de Dios and put God out of the picture and trying to uh, try to trying to save a world without the help of God. Y sacan a Dios completamente del cuadro tratando ellos de salvar al mundo sin la presencia de Dios. So when Jesus came he reinforced that in the book of Luke chapter 4 and verse 16 he said and he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up and as his custom was he went into the synagogue and the which day and the Sabbath day and stood up for to read y vemos en Lucas 4.16 que Jesús nos da más. Dice, y vino a Nazaret donde había sido criado y entró conforme a su costumbre el día sábado, séptimo día, en la sinagoga y se levantó a leer. There's a reason why. Hay razón por la cual sucede Because eso. Because the Sabbath differentiated, that's the right word, mm -hmm. word now. Differentiated? Yes, between the Israelites and the Eden. The, the Eden sacrificed human beings on their altar. Y el séptimo día diferenciaba el pueblo de Israel de los paganos. Los paganos ofrecían eh, humanos literalmente en sus altares. And they sacrificed to the queen of heaven. There is no such thing as the queen of heaven. And to the sun and to the moon. Y sacrificaban a la reina del cielo. La cuando existe y al sol y la luna. But wherever you go and you see an altar with 12 stones, you know there's an Israelite just pass here. Pero por doquier que viajaba y veía un altar con 12 piedras decía un Israelita pasó. Because they sacrificed to the true and living God. Porque ofrecían sacrificio pero al Dios verdadero y vivo. And that's the reason why God challenged the Egyptians by showing them, hey, the God of the river is no God at all. Y por esa razón Dios desafió a los egipcios mostrándoles el supuesto Dios del río no es ningún Dios. Because the God of God will turn the river into blood and you cannot return it back until he says so. Porque el Dios de todos los dioses va a cambiar al agua en sangre y tú no puedes volver a cambiarlo hasta que él mande. Because he is God. Porque él es Dios con so mayúsculas. Jesus came here. Y vino Jesús a este mundo. And as his custom was. Y como era su costumbre. He goes to church on the Sabbath. Why? Because in the beginning he did this. Y asistía a la iglesia el séptimo día sábado. ¿Por qué? Porque en el principio hizo lo mismo. Genesis chapter 2 verse 1 we read. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the hosts of them. And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day uh, of all his work. Which he had made. Genesis 2, 1 y 2. Y fueron acabados los cielos y la tierra y todo su ornamento. Y acabó Dios en el día séptimo su obra que hizo. Y reposó el día séptimo de toda su obra que había hecho. And God did three things upon the seventh day that he did not do upon the first. He did not do on the second. He did not do on the third. And the seventh day did three things. Y vemos que Dios al séptimo día le da tres cosas por así decir que no le dio o no hizo en ni el primer ni segundo ni tercer ni ningún otro día de la semana. By the way, let nobody fool you. Today is the seventh day. Saturday is the seventh day. No permitas que nadie te engañe porque hoy día el séptimo día sigue siendo el mismo. So what did he do? Entonces qué hizo Dios? Genesis 2 verse 3. The Bible said and God blessed the seventh day. Go ahead. And he sanctified the seventh day. Because in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. Genesis 2, 3, veamos. Y bendijo, ¿qué hizo? Bendijo Dios al séptimo día y lo santificó. Porque en él reposó de toda su obra que había Dios creado y hecho. You better mind how you curse the Sabbath. Tenga cuidado como maldice el sábado. Because it has been blessed by God. Porque fue... Eh, 
bendito o hecho bendito por Dios. And I've been reading these 66 books and I don't see where he removes his blessing from the Sabbath. Porque si usted lee los 66 libros de la Biblia, no vemos dónde Dios remueve su bendición del sábado. It is still blessed. Aún sigue siendo bendecido. And then he sanctified the Sabbath. He set it apart for holy use. Y luego lo santificó. ¿Qué significa? Lo apartó para uso santo. But the devil keeps the world busy. Mas Satanás mantiene al mundo ocupado. As they did in the dark ages. Así como hicieron durante la edad oscura. So you go to the market today, packed with people. Entonces va al centro al mercado, está lleno. You go to the supermarket, it's packed with people. Visita al supermercado, está repleto. You go to central church, it's empty, nobody there, church closed. Va a la iglesia central. Está cerrado, no podemos estar en iglesia. If you think it's central alone, you go to Hillview, it's closed too. Ay, ay, ay. Si usted piensa que solo es la iglesia central, va a Hillview, cerrado también. Hey, you don't understand what the devil is doing. Usted no entiende lo que hace Satanás. He's very smart, but there's a set of people who are stubborn like a donkey. Y, <laughs> él es muy astuto, pero hay un grupo de personas que son tan obstinante no voy a decir como que verdad <laughs> it's a they're a hard nut to crack you pick them up you bang how you go again you, yeah. you porque como dicen verdad you más duro que el cocoyolo you pick them up you lick them down they bounce right back they're porque a hard nut to crack porque los derriba y se de pie otra vez no importa son tercos como you, you close the church for two weeks by the time you open it back and the third week church is back again porque cierran la iglesia por dos semanas y cuando la abren está más llena que antes because God sanctified that day and he set it aside for holy use ¿por qué? porque Dios santificó ese día y lo apartó para uso santo and then he said Elder Dallard <laughs> entonces el hermano Dallard when you rest cuando uno descansa, reposa. It just simply means that you don't have to take out those big uh, 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 things, uh, uh, not animal, I was going to say animal, but those big equipment and work. You rest from those work. Y por ejemplo, el hermano Dalhart, ahora el séptimo día no va a tomar todo esas máquinas y equipo para ir a trabajar, sino que descansa, reposa. And you picked up Jesus. Y ahora toma a Jesús en el séptimo día. By the way, you can't pick him up if you didn't have him in the entire week. You better have him on Sunday and Monday and Tuesday. Y de hecho no lo puede tomar si durante la semana lo olvidó. Hay que tomarlo domingo, lunes, martes, todos los días. No, there's a word that is in this that I'm going to... I only have two more verses leave. Watch this now. Watch this. Watch this. I want to use this word. Vamos a usar esta palabra. Dos versículos más y ya. Chapter 2 and verse 1. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished. That's the word I want. That one word. Finished. Y fueron acabados. Génesis 2, 1, acabados. If you look at Luke chapter 2 and verse, I mean, 23 and verse 52, the Bible said, this, this man went and to Pilate and begged the body of Jesus and he took it down and wrapped it in a linen and laid it in the sepulcher that were hewn in stone wherein never a man before was laid. Y si usted va al libro de Lucas capítulo 23, versículo 52, vamos a leerlo, dice, el cual no había consentido en el consejo ni en los hechos de ellos de al Arimatea, ciudad de Judea, el cual también esperaba el reino de Dios. Lo que explica acá es que esta persona tomó, pidió el cuerpo de Cristo para poder cuidar de ello, ¿verdad? That is Jesus we're referring to. Jesus. Hablando de Jesús en su muerte. Look what he say. They took it down. <laughs> dice, lo bajaron. You talk about the, you talk about the creator of heaven and earth, the king of the universe. They took it down. Y hablando del Dios creador, el Dios creador de los universos, y dice que lo bajaron, ¿verdad? Solo así. And wrapped it in linen. Y lo envolvieron en lino fino. Look us, look our Lord Jesus to to say this another sermon to save us. Miren cómo Jesús hasta dónde llegó para qué? Para salvarnos. He became an it. Llegó a ser un Objeto, digamos. That day when they took Jesus down, the Bible said it was preparation day. Watch this now. It was which day? Preparation day. And then what came after the preparation day? And the Sabbath do what? Draw on. Y de acuerdo a la Biblia, si usted lo lee cuidadosamente, dice que Jesús murió en el día de la preparación. Y luego sigue el versículo diciendo que se acercaba el día de de reposo. Hey Adventist, you want something to say? Go preach this. Adventist. You are the church. Go preach this. Pueblo Adventista, quiere decir algo? Predique esto. Mire, and vaya leave, afuera. And leave off the leader of the church. You go preach this. No hable del líder de la iglesia. Usted vaya a presentar esto. And the woman also which came with him from Galilee followed after and behold the sepulcher and how his body was laid. 
Y dice el versículo 55, y las mujeres que con él habían venido de Galilea siguieron también y vinieron al sepulcro y como fue puesto su cuerpo. Now the preparation day y el día de preparación is the sixth day of the, the, the week. Es el sexto día de la semana. In Genesis chapter 2 and verse 1, when the Bible said, uh, thus the heavens and the earth were finished, God was finishing with the sixth day of creation. Y esto lo vemos en Génesis 2, 1, donde dice, y fueron acabados o terminados. Jesús estaba terminando su obra de creación en el sexto día. John chapter 1, verse 1. All the way to verse 14 tells us it was Jesus that created the world. Y usted puede ver Juan capítulo 1, los versículos 1 al 14, donde nos muestra claramente que Jesús es quien creó este mundo. But the world ran away. Mas el mundo se desvió, huyó. The world rebellious, rebel against their creator God. El mundo en rebeldía fue cuando contra su creador Dios. Remind me of a little boy. Me recuerda a ese niño. Long time said anything about the story. He built a boat. He built ese a boat. Ese niño que hizo su eh, botecito, su barquecito. A beautiful one. Now we can stand in the in the in the. You can stand over there now, right? Con yeah. Covid, no? Oh, you can cover it, right? <laughs> <laughs> He built a boat. Este niño que hizo su embarcación pequeña. And what happened? ¿Y qué sucedió? They went by the river, he and his friend. Él con sus amiguitos fueron al río. And the water took it away. A very beautiful one. Mas la corriente se llevó este botecito. I don't know how long they after, but he went to the store. He went looking, window, window shopping. Eh, no sé cuánto tiempo pasó, pero el niño visitó el pueblo y andaba en las tiendas nada más mirando como el little boy saw a boat looking just exactly like the one that he built y este niño en una vitrina vio un parquecito igual a la suya and he ran in and grabbed a hold of the boat and ran out and the, and the, the shop the, the keeper of the shop got a hold of him and said that shop lifting what you doing you can go to prison for this y el niño entró y agarra este botecito y sale corriendo más el dueño de la tienda dice a dónde vas estás robando boy said this is my boat Dice, este es mío. Said, That's not your boat. Y el dueño le dice, no, no es tuyo. Look at the price, you have to pay for it. Mira el precio, debes pagar por ello. Cried and he went home and he told his daddy about it. Fue llorando a casa y le contó a papá acerca de su experiencia. Work a little and they found, he got enough money and he went back to the shop, the exact one. Trabajó para juntar dinero, regresó a la misma tienda. The boat was still there. Y ahí estaba su barca. And barquecita. he bought the boat. Y lo compró. And as he walked through the door, y ahora, al salir por la puerta, the shopkeeper heard him saying, you're mine, you're mine. Pudieron escucharlo decir, eres mío, eres mío. Two times you're mine. Dos veces me perteneces. Once because I what? Me. La primera vez porque te hice, tú crees. Twice because I bought you. Y la segunda vez porque te redimí, te It compré. It was Christ that created this world. Fue Cristo Jesús que creó este mundo. Men run away from him. Y el mundo huyó en rebeldía. Satan came and took this world from Adam and Eve. Satanás vino y arrebató este mundo de Adán y Eva. And the Creator God became a man. Mas el Dios creador llegó a ser hombre. This time he's not creating the world, but he's recreating back his character in you and I. Y ahora en estos momentos no está creando de nuevo el mundo, sino que está recreando su carácter en usted y yo. There's a word that is used. They call it redeem. Hay una palabra que usamos para esto es redimir. He came here to redeem us. Vino a este mundo para redimirnos. And when he finished with redemption, y cuando terminó la obra de redención, he said, él dijo, when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. Cuando Jesús había probado o recibido el vinagre, exclamó, basta ya. Watch this. Let's see if I can go to it now. Oh yes, got it. Where is it? Where's the word finish? Up, oh. across. <laughs> yeah, we, we have a big green screen right here, right? Oh, sit down right here, right? That's what he said. You can see this. He said it is finished. You said that the pantalla dice basta ya. You all are not seeing it, right? It, it's finished, right? You sure it's there, Pastor? <laughs> this is where it finished. You sure it's there? <laughs> yeah, it's right on the green wall right here. This is where it finished. <laughs> You're having vision, Pastor. All right. Ahí está, verdad? Basta ya. The very same word he used in creation, la misma palabra que vemos al principio en la creación, is the very same word he used at redemption. Es la misma que vuelve a repetir en la redención. What he did at creation when he finished the world, lo que hizo en la creación cuando había eh, terminado de 
crear al mundo. He rested on the Sabbath day. Reposó en su muerte en el sexto día. What he did at create at redemption? Lo que hizo en la redención. He rested on the Sabbath day. Reposó el séptimo día. He went into the tomb. Estaba en la tumba. You could send a million soldiers there. He coming up and the Sabbath day is resting. El séptimo día podían haber mandado un millón de soldados. Él estaba reposando. No va a salir. But chapter 24 of Luke said early the first day of the week and Sunday Jesus arose from the grave and he didn't say because I came up from the grave you should take that day holy. It's not in the Bible. Y en Lucas 24 uno dice claramente. Ahora en el, eh, perdón, en el primer día de la semana, el domingo, muy temprano, Jesús resucita en, de entre los muertos, pero tampoco dice, God is still the Lord of the Sabbath. Ya que resucité, ahora ustedes van a eh, adorarme en el día domingo. Cristo Jesús sigue siendo Dios del séptimo día sábado. He loves every day. Él ama o le gusta todos los días. He protects us every day. Nos protege todos los días. But there's one day that is dear to him. Pero hay un día que le es muy especial. Because it's challenge. It challenge Satan. ¿Por qué? Porque desafía a Satanás. Who claim to be the god of this earth. Que se llama, dice ser el dios de este mundo. Christian Amigo cristiano, do not compromise. No haga acuerdo de estos tipos. Do not compromise your faith. No uh, ponga su fe en peligro. If you have to stand up for God, stand up for him. Si ha de estar firme y ser solo por ser firme para el Señor, do haga. not work on God's Sabbath. No trabaje en el séptimo día del Señor. He will provide. Él Jehová Dios proveerá. He has ways and means to provide. Él tiene mil maneras para proveer por nosotros. My boss that I used to work with as a welder, he fired me more than one time. Cuando yo trabajaba para alguien soldado, más que una vez me despidió. And every day man, I heard my, my gate knocking, hey, you're not coming to work. I said, I thought you fired me on Friday because I didn't want to work on Sabbath. Y cada día toca mi puerta, no vas a venir. Mira, ya me despediste porque no voy a trabajar el séptimo día sábado. He said, boy, you better jump into the vehicle, we're going to work. Y me decía, mira, mete en el vehículo, Vamos, vamos a trabajar. But he knows that I will stand up for God by the grace of God. Y él sabía que por la gracia de Dios sería firme para él. And so as I close. Ahora para terminar. You and I have big challenges ahead of us. Usted big y yo tenemos grandes desafíos por delante. And that's why we pray for our governments. Y por eso eh, oramos por los gobiernos y el gobierno de este país. Of the world. Y de todo el mundo. That we can live a peaceable life. Que podamos vivir una vida pacífica. I don't know for how long. No sé por cuánto tiempo más. But while that is happening, Pero mientras eso sucede, we will preach. Vamos a seguir predicando. Stand up for God. Seamos firmes para el Señor. Let us pray. Eh, oremos. Father, Padre celestial. Thank you, thank you for your word. Gracias, gracias, gracias por tu palabra. These scriptures are alive. Estos pasajes bíblicos están vivos. And powerful. Y son poderosos. Than any two-edged sword. Más que cualquier eh, espada de dos filos piercing even the marrow the divining of the soul que puede llegar hasta el, eh, el tuétano y dividir el alma and it's a discerner of the thought of the heart y puede discernir los pensamientos del corazón bless your people bendiga su pueblo bless those who are watching us bendiga los que nos estuvieron viendo en vivo and those who are listening to us on Faith FM y los que nos escuchan por Radio Fe we pray that The message today rogando que el mensaje de este día will redirect someone to you pueda señalar a alguien hacia usted who have gone astray alguien que se ha desviado through your spirit pero mediante su espíritu thank you again we pray una vez más damos gracias señor bless faith fm bendiga en forma especial radio bless fe bless the central brethren los hermanos de la iglesia central bless the adventists around the world el pueblo adventista del séptimo día alrededor del mundo bless your people who are still in babylon bendiga a su pueblo que aún está en babilonia so they will come out and worship porque saldrán para adorar the true and living god el único dios vivo y verdadero in jesus name en el nombre de Cristo Jesús oramos. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Dios les bendiga. Join us tomorrow evening. Una vez más extendemos la invitación que se una mañana por la noche. As we continue. Al seguir presentando la palabra de Dios. God bless you. Dios te bendiga. Una vez más de parte de Radio Fe. Radio Fe en las frecuencias de 94.1 y 104.5. Le deseamos un muy feliz sábado. Música